Hi, so I wanted to get on and just quickly tell you a little bit about the next readathon that I'm going to be doing. So this readathon is going to be August 13th through the 19th. It is a week-long readathon and it's hosted by Creating and Co. Creating and Co, if you're not familiar with it, is a planner, sticker, supply online shop. And basically, um, the shop owner's name is Paige. And basically what she do is she provides, um, she creates, makes and sells stickers for planners. If you're someone who likes adding stickers to your planning, um, whether they are functional or decorative. She does, she also really loves reading. I believe she has a channel where she does a lot of book related um, videos. And so her shop has kind of morphed into a sticker planning, but also reading related shop and so she does also sell bookish items like I know she has mugs and bookmarks and shirts that have like bookish sayings and, and so on so she has a Facebook group specifically for her shop and then she has a Facebook group that is a little bit more specific for reading um, because she found that a lot of the people who are part of her group and who have purchased from her are also interested in reading so she created her own book club and I believe this Facebook group book club has been around for about a year, maybe a little bit longer. And she's done a few different readathons, and this one is her next one. So it is called the TBR Throwdown Readathon. And the theme, as you can guess, is to throw down or try to get through as many books in your TBR as you can, or basically just to get through some of the books in your TBR and your to be read list. Because as you know, as book lovers, our list is endless, right? Our stacks of books are, are towers high above us. So there are five challenges that she has for this. And if you are a planner, she does have stickers related um, to this that you can put in your planner. It is not, it's, it would probably be too late to get them now um, because we're about a week, less than a week out. Um, and obviously you don't need to have the stickers or any of the kind of planner related items to participate in the actual readathon. I, um, because I'm kind of on a low buy, no buy for right now for planners related items, um, I didn't purchase any of her stickers, but I'm still gonna be participating. All right, so here are the five challenges. The first one is to read a book that has been on your shelf the longest. The second one is to read the smallest book that is on your shelf. The third one is to read the book with the most colorful cover. The fourth is to read a book that has orange on the cover. And the last one, the fifth challenge, is to read the most anticipated book on your TBR. So I'm going to go through and just tell you what my books are. So my first book is the book that has been on my shelf the longest, and this is House of Leaves by Dan uh, Mark Danieluski. And I might be saying his name wrong, um, and I apologize for that. This book has been on my shelf for literally 10 plus years. Um, I got this when I was in college, um, kind of around the junior, senior year of college on recommendation from a friend who had read it and just was really kind of blown away by it. Um, I left it behind when I went to Korea, but then asked my dad to purchase and send it to me when I went to, um, and so he mailed this book to me uh, while I was in Korea. I held on to it while I was in Korea, came back, and then um, it's just been sitting on my shelf ever since. So this I like to call the my most favorite book that I've never finished. And the reason because is because I've started this probably three or four times, and the furthest that I've gotten is about, I think, two-thirds of the way through. Um, it's The chapter is called The Minotaur. I don't quite know what the I don't remember what the meaning is behind that because I didn't finish it and it's been a while um, what I found is that for whatever reason things happen life happens I have to put the book down and then so much time passes that I feel obligated to start from the beginning to get through this book so my goal is to finish this book because it has been on my shelf forever and I am hoping that it is as great as I think it will be. It is a compilation of a bunch of papers and articles and videos um, about this house which a man has put together and which another person is reading. And so there are parts that read like transcripts, there are parts that there's a lot of white space in the book. Um, 
where and a lot of the words are kind of shifted around to really kind of mimic the reader being in the space of the house. Um, as the house changes, the shape of the words on the page change as well. So I just really like that idea. I think it's very intriguing and I don't, I haven't kept quite up to date, but I have heard rumors that there might be a series, a TV show pilot of this coming out. And so I really want to get through this book. The next challenge is the smallest book on your shelf challenge. And the book that I'm going to read for this is Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire. So this is obviously a library book, but on my TBR shelf, my online TBR shelf through Goodreads, this is one of the shortest books that I have and also that um, is available to me at this time. So this is the one I'm going to be reading. Um, I, am in the, I am judging smallest by how many pages it is and how wide it is. So it's only about, um, the, this book has that it's 174 pages, which is pretty small to me, especially in comparison to a lot of my other books, which are hundreds of pages long. So this is book three in the Wayward Children series. I've read the first two books for um, previous readathons. I'm really interested in kind of reading this book and kind of continuing the storyline and finding out more about the different characters. Um, because the first book was kind of setting the scene of what would happen if children who disappeared into alternate universes came back. Um, what would be their reaction and their family's reactions and how would they readjust. The second book focused a little bit more on specific characters and I think this one might also focus on specific characters, um, but I'm not really sure. I don't really know anything about it, so I'm excited to read it. All right, for the most colorful cover challenge, I'm kind of in a slight conundrum um, because I want to use one of the Sailor Moon manga that I have or manga that I have um, because they have enormously colorful covers. The only problem is is that it's been so long since I've read. I read most of the series and then I stopped because I wanted to actually purchase the books. So these are my own copies. Um, and then it took such a long time for me to purchase the books that I don't remember what book I stopped at. Um, so I'm not sure if I stopped at book nine or if I stopped at book 10. I know I have not read these last two. So because these are all manga and they'll, I'm assuming will be pretty quick reads for me, I'm just going to read all of these and in combination this will be my most colorful cover but here are the covers in case you have not seen them so this is book nine with sailor pluto book 10 with sailor saturn this is book 11 with the little girl that i can't remember her name because it's been such a long time since i've seen the, the tv series um, but i will put her name at the bottom of the screen and then um this is book 12 with Sailor Moon um, as, I guess, Queen Serenity um, or Neo Queen Serenity, maybe Princess Serenity, um, Chibi Moon, and then the little girl that I can't remember her name. Ugh, it's killing me. It's been such a long time since I've, I've read these or watched the this, this series. So this will be my most colorful cover. For the book that has the orange cover on it, I'm going, I've chosen The Shadow of the Wind, and this is by Carlos Ruiz Zafron, or Zafron, Zafon. Um, and I chose this because it has the orange on the cover. Um, it's also a book that's been on my shelf for a very long time. I've heard, um, I think I've read some pretty decent reviews on it, or, or just, I haven't read the actual reviews, but read that people enjoyed the book. Um, I have attempted to read it a couple of times. I've only gotten about a chapter in. I don't remember anything about it other than um, I just needed to put it down at the time. It's kind of a heavy, hefty book, um, which is probably another reason why I haven't read it yet because it's hard because I don't really like carrying around heavy books. So I'm hoping to get through this in the readathon. And the last book is the most anticipated read. So I'm putting this as my most anticipated read because this is the book that I really wanted to read actually 
for the Booktubeathon challenge, um, but wasn't able to because I hadn't wasn't made available to me at the library yet. So now it's available. I'm really excited to read it, and it's called Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. So my understanding is that it's kind of looks like it might be kind of a take on a Scooby-Doo type mystery. Um, it says, so the, the book jacket cover says, with raucous humor and brilliantly orchestrated mayhem, meddling kids subverts teen detective archetypes like the Hardy Boys, the Famous Five, and Scooby-Doo and delivers an exuberant and wickedly entertaining celebration of horror, love, friendship, and many tentacled interdimensional demon spawn. So, Detective novel has kids breaks the kind of Archetype or stereotype of detective kids. I'm excited to read this because I Have no idea what it's about other than that So those are the five plus books that I'm going to be reading for the TBR throwdown challenge um, Or readathon. So if you are participating in this readathon, let me know what books you'll be reading And if you're not participating in this readathon, that's totally fine as well But what books are you currently reading or planning to read in the next week or two? I know that currently right now it's August so the newts are also in progress for the Newt's Magical Readathon is also in progress for this month and you might be participating in that. I am as well. I'm doubling up on a few of these books um, just because there's no way I can read like literally like 30, 40 books uh, in a month if I were to separate all my books out. So I am doing a little bit of overlapping, um, but I'm still getting a lot of reading in and I'm super excited. All right, let me know what your current reads are. I will talk to you later, and I will see you in the comments. Bye.